Now, the last time I left you off, I actually told you there was a bug in our code. Um, and it's a pretty simple one. But what happens is if you go to the custom sun sky and you adjust the time to something like 11 o'clock and hit play, it's actually going to become night and it's going to do the day and night cycle. Now, the reason for that is if we go to our custom game state, um, we actually set the value to uh, zero and update it when the timer is set, which means that the moment we start up the game, we go and take our time of day in seconds, which is zero every single time. Now, we're going to fix that. Uh, but before we fix that, uh, I noticed I wrote cast to BP custom sun sky. Now this is actually not a requirement. You can delete that. Just plug in the act of class into the sun sky and the execution pin. Now we don't have to cast, it's unnecessary. Just going to drag all these out a bit. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag out the sun sky and get hours. Then we're going to go ahead and plug in get minute, minutes, and then we're going to do get seconds. Awesome. I just want to go ahead and right click here and make a new um, make time span. And then we're going to go ahead, plug in the hours into the hours, the minutes into the minutes and seconds into seconds. Now it's going to go ahead and make a time span for us. Now we're going to take this time span and drag out the return value and uh, get total seconds. So what this does is this takes the time span's value and actually converts it to seconds, which is pretty cool. I'm just going to do that in a float, uh, which is not what we want. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and drag this out again a bit more. We're going to really need space for this one. Awesome. Now let's get total seconds. We're going to go ahead and take our time of day in seconds and set it. And we're going to set this after we've done our cast or gotten our class. And then the set is actually going to be our get total seconds. Now it's going to, if you connect the float directly to the integer, it's going to use this uh, truncate node, which uh, takes the decimal part and just removes it. So it's integer compatible. Now we don't need the decimal part, so it's not important. And now you can just go ahead and move this to uh, be cleaner. Uh, you can move this a bit down if you want. And yeah, now that's it. Now we fix that bug. So if I compile and save, and I go ahead, and if I continue from 11 p.m., yeah, it's going to be from 11 p.m. Now, some keen mind of you should have noticed that the sun isn't completely round. It has this weird uh, glitchiness to it. And the reason for this is actually your quality settings. If I go to settings and I go to engine scalability settings, uh, your post-processing needs to be on cinematic to round it out. This is how it looks on low. And if I go ahead and say so cinematic, then boom, it's round again. It's to do with uh, post-processing. Now that the sun is round, we can go ahead and add some clouds. You can go ahead and create a new visual effects. And then you want to go ahead and create a new volumetric cloud. This adds these beautiful looking clouds. Uh, you might not think they're too special. But I'm going to show you something very cool about them. Just want to put the location to zero. Zero. And I like putting that on 200 because it's up in the air a bit. Awesome. Now this layer bottom altitude, you can adjust how high the cloud should be in the air. Uh, so you can adjust that how you want. Um, I'm going to put it at a value of 7 because I really like the value of 7. Now the layer height is how high you want the cloud to be. I'm going to put that on 12. I really like that. Uh, now you can just mess around with these trace settings if you want. Uh, you can also yeah just move it around and get something that you're... Uh, Happy about, but I'm going to leave these tracing start max distance and all these at default. But there's really a lot of settings you can change. You can really make this look beautiful, but can also kill your performance if you're not careful. Uh, so yeah, this is just what I'm going to go for. So if I go ahead and go hit play, then the sun should start to set. 
go behind the clouds. I'm gonna go ahead, go behind. Then here's the sunset, and what's awesome is it actually changes the colors of the clouds. Then the moon's gonna come up, and then it's more night. It's very cool looking, and I like the way it messes with the clouds at night. Uh, but we shouldn't get ourselves, a, we shouldn't get too ahead of ourselves. There's still a few problems. Uh, so we want to go to our BP Custom Sun Sky. Click on the moon. I'm gonna go to the viewport. And let's go ahead. Um, now this is the moon, I believe. So if we click BP Custom Sun Sky. And we set the hours. Uh, yeah, this is the moon. Uh, now we can go to our moon and adjust settings. So the source angle, I really like at 5. You can set it to whatever you want, but I really like love like five you can also adjust the moon to whatever you want i think anything between one and zero is perfect like i said i really like 0 0.8 this light color you can go ahead and drag it towards the blue make it a bit more bluer so the moon is a bit more bluer other than that i really can't think of something here that i really uh need you can change the cloud scattered luminance to change the color of uh, the uh, clouds. Also, you can adjust the disk color if you want. So you can change the color of the moon. I'm gonna change it a bit towards the blue. Yeah, that's it's really nice looking. Other than that, I'm done with the moon. Now I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the sun. I like the sun at a uh, source angle value of five. Uh, 2.75 lux for the sun. I'm not changing anything the light color. And yeah, that's really all of the settings. You can adjust how the cloud and the sun looks if you want. Uh, but I'm really happy with uh, how it looks. Um, so that's perfect. I can go ahead, compile, and save. If I go to my BP, this looks absolutely beautiful. Like, I really like how this looks at night. Um, but before we really get ahead of ourselves, again, um, I'm going to show you an awesome feature of our custom sun sky. If I click on the custom sun sky, I go all the way up, you'll see there's this latitude, longitude, time zone, and north offset. And what's great is we can actually input real world values of places. And it will actually go and um, actually adjust. Um, the sun to be accurate to that real world location. So here I'll just go to my browser and here I have Google Maps open. Now here I'm uh, quite close to Cape Town. Cape Town is there and uh, here's just the peak part of Cape Town. If I go ahead and right click I can see the latitude and longitude. So it's minus 34 and 18. So latitude minus 34 longitude 18 and Cape Town's time zone is GMT plus 2. Now if I go look at the time, this time is actually accurate. So the sun rises at about 8 p 8 a.m. here in uh, not here, well in Cape Town and then it just sets at yeah about uh, 7 p.m. And that's amazing that we already just got it so accurately. Really cool. Uh, if we adjust the time more today, uh, this compass actually makes more sense if you're trying to accurately recreate a real place. If I scroll up and look at the north offset, this actually decides where north is. You can point the sun to any north you want. I'm going to leave it at zero. You can also add months, uh, any month and day of the year. Um, I'm settling for 9 and uh, 21. Actually, I could go ahead because it's uh, the 10th month and it's the first day of me recording this. Uh, you're probably going to see this at a different date. But yeah, this is my time. And yeah, that's a really cool feature. But uh, we're missing something really crucial. If I hit play and the sun rises and then does it then it's going in a different direction thanks to us being a different part of the world. Really like the clouds that... I like the way they're taking the shape of the sky. Now I really like uh, this moonrise here. This moon looks absolutely beautiful. 
Uh, but there's other problems. Uh, if you look around, there's no stars. That's something we're going to have to go and add ourselves. So how do we do this? Well, simple. We're going to create a new material for a sphere which will rotate around us, which will emit the stars based on what time it is. Or not what time it is, what brightness level we're at. So what you want to do is you want to open your BP Custom Sun. Okay, and you want to go to your moon. And we're going to add a component. It's going to be a static mesh. And then we're going to name this stars. Now the static mesh you want it to be is our inverse sphere inverse normals. Uh, yeah, well, that's fine for now. To compile and save. We're just going to have to go ahead and scale this up a bit. Uh, let's go ahead. The scale should be, I think, something like uh, a million works pretty well. Um, just paste in, paste in a million, paste in a million. Now, it's important to note that uh, there's something you have to do. If you want to scroll all the way down to collision. Turn off generate overlap event. Don't want the characters to step on it. And we want it to have no collision. Also want to go and turn off cast shadow. We don't want this to cast a shadow because it's going to cause massive performance issues if we want to bake light. So not a good idea. Other than that, there's really not a lot of settings here to change. It's pretty fine. It's pretty good. So now we can just compile and save. I'm going to have to go ahead and create the star material. Uh, so we should be able to see, yeah, the sun's a bit weird. And yeah, we see a bit of the sphere there. I just want to go ahead and go to our... Actually, want to go ahead to our content browser. Uh, right click and uh, create a new material. This will be M stars it's with a capital S. Now we're just going to open that up. Perfect. And we're going to go ahead and first create a texture sample. Now the texture in this texture sample should be our stars. Like I said, you could use any star file you want. I just chose this one because it's convenient for me. Now we're also going to have to go ahead and create the code that detects how bright this is. Now usually you have to go to the BP of the custom sun sky make that calculate stuff but thanks to the sky atmosphere we have a few things that can help us calculate stuff in uh, the material graph so the first thing you want to do is you want to right click and look for sky atmosphere view luminance not light luminance it's view luminance and what you want to do is this view luminance you just want to go ahead and create a new mask Scroll all the way down to see vector ops and use the component mask. And then there's four options. There's red, green, blue, and alpha. Uh, you want to tick off red and green, and we will only want blue to be masked off. We only want to view the blue parts of the luminance. It's perfect. Now that that's masked off, we want to go ahead and use a power node. And the exponent we want to power by as well. And then the next, and practically the last thing we want to do, is multiply. And the reason um, for this multiply is I think the more you type in here, uh, the wider um, the amount of light you're going to check. So the bigger amount of light you're going to view with the luminance. So um, I found a value of 6 is pretty good. And that's a value that uh, Unreal Engine used or Epic used in one of the live streams. I really like these settings. You can uh, mess around with the multiplier if you want to take in more light or less light. It's your choice. But I really like this. Uh, the way this is set up. Now I'm going to go ahead and drag this out to a clamp mode. Because I want to clamp the val value uh, to minimum 0 and max 1. Now we're just going to select all these and go ahead and create a comment from selection and this code is uh, checks how bright it is so it checks how bright the atmosphere currently is and then it outputs a value 
Now this value, we're actually going to go ahead and lerp or linear interpret. Interpolate. <laughs> interpolate. Wow, I'm really screwing up. Um, yeah, but linear interpolate. I just want to plug that in. And then we're going to go ahead and disconnect. That's we want to connect it to the alpha. Now the constant B value should be minus 1. The constant A value should be 1. I found this to work the best, but you can adjust with the settings uh, to get a brighter or more shallow star. It's your choice. Um, I'm also going to go ahead. No, I actually don't really have to. Uh, that's necessary. So um, the texture sample node, we're actually going to put to use. But before we can do that, I'm going to go to our M stars material. Look at the blend mode. We want uh, translucent because it actually will be uh, transparent. Uh, and we want to turn off cast ray trace shadows. We don't really want that. Uh, for shading model, I think unlit is a really good way to handle that. I don't think we want this to mess around with lighting. I think it's unnecessary. And now we're also going to go ahead and create a new multiply node. And this multiply node, its A value uh, will be this. And the texture sample will be the B value. So we can go ahead and just create a reroute node here to make it a bit cleaner. And I think you can plug this in the emissive and plug this in the opacity. Now we're just going to go ahead and move this down and up a bit. Yeah, this, this looks pretty clean. I can save that. And once this is uh, compiling shaders and all that, we're going to fix this compiling shaders and make sure you can... Uh, Live update the material, but anyway, I'm gonna go to our first player example map. Now you'll see there isn't really a oh, wait, yeah. Just want to go to your BP custom sun sky and go to the stars. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure that the material is on new material. So I think we called it star, yeah, M stars. So you should see, yeah, there's the stars that shining, compile and save. Now, if we look out here. Uh, we should see that there are currently no stars outside. Uh, but the moment we uh, shift our time uh, to be uh, towards uh, a darker time, you'll see uh, the stars just slowly but surely fading in. And then, yeah, then when it's night, it's full blown. And uh, now, while these stars are cool that they actually fade in like that, I don't really like the scale of them. Uh, they look a bit weird. They're really big stars. So I just want to go to our M stars and go to this UV. I'm going to go ahead and make a texture coordinate node, which means we can scale up this texture like we want to. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, scale this up to a value I like. I like 3 times uh, 3. So we'll scale on each axis by three. I really like this setting. Like I said, you can play around with the values. You can play around with the lerp values. Just, just mess around and find the setting you like. And yeah, I like this because it's just... I really like a starry sky. If you want, you can reduce the brightness a bit by uh, changing this lerp up a bit. I think minus 0. Uh, I mean 0. 0.8 should... Work pretty well if we check that. It's a bit dimmer. I really like 0 0.8. Uh, I'm also going to play it safe here and this lerp. After this lerp is done, I'm going to use a clamp mode to make sure we stay in a 0 and a 1 value so we don't uh, overstay that. Yeah, I think something like this. And I'll also just move this texture sample in. But yeah, something like this looks really good. I'm going to save that. A look here. Yeah. I really like this setting. I really like the starry sky. I've had play. Let's try this. So yeah, the stars move around uh, with the moon. Which I really like. And then when the moon sets, the sun's going to up and the stars are fading. And then yeah, when it's day, the stars are gone. Like, I don't see any stars anymore. And then when the moment uh, comes, when the sun sets, 
is gonna be soon. Then when that sunset happens, then the stars comes out and goes with the moon. And it's absolutely breathtaking. I really love how this looks. Um, I'm actually shocked how good it turned out. Um, yeah, that's really cool. Um, I just have to think quickly. I think there's something I want to do still. Uh, but I can't really think of something I want to do yet. I think this is really already working out pretty well. Let's try from 12 uh, p.m. and check how this... Oh, so yeah, 12 p.m. and check how the sun moves. Yeah, I really love this. I think I think we've we're done with this part. Um, now I'm gonna do one more part, and in the next part, I'm actually gonna create an event system, which means lights and stuff like that will actually turn on at certain times, so you can let certain events happen at certain times, and that's a really cool system. I can't wait to see how it turns out when we uh, turn lights on when it's becoming to uh, become uh, night, which is, I really can't wait. I'm really hyped about this. Uh, but without further ado, guys, thanks for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe, hit like if you like the video, hit dislike if you didn't. And yeah, good night, everybody. See you guys in the next part.